The Grip of Nyarlahotep Instruction As in the first degrees ceremony, the candidate is first given the knowledge lecture accompanied by a brief introduction to the initiation ritual, delivered by their guide or first initiator, who subsequently does not participate in the rite proper. The introduction lecture explains the origin of the rite in prehistoric antiquity, introduces the characters of the rite, and gives a brief synopsis of what occurs in the rite. Following this, the guide asks the candidate if they have any questions, and then the guide leads the candidate into the vault. Guide you have chosen to pursue the mysteries of Imhotep to learn about Atlantean masonry. But are you prepared to restore it? This is a solemn truth you must prove yourself. To enter paradise all one must do is choose not to bring about the ends of mischief and chaos. If you do not follow the urge to destroy yourself and be resurrected in a more perfect world, you would not exist at all. But we exist to build up, not tear down. You must work to restore the Atlantean tradition of fair justice and democratic ideals to reality. You must go out and tell all your friends to tell all their friends the right way to achieve transcendence, though this right way will be different for each of them. How then can we spread the word about the good work of restoring Atlantean masonry? If we perfect ourselves, those who come to us will already understand and want to know more naturally. That is the subject of this ritual. In order to build the pyramids, our order recounts, Imhotep recruited the black magician, Nyarlahotep. Nyarlahotep then raised up workers from the dead. In this rite, you will learn how to activate your naturally negative-oriented chi, or quanta of karma, and make them switch on positively. Therefore, during this rite, you are asked to meditate upon the level plane by day and the completed pyramids by night. This is to remind you of the underworld, where tomorrow is perpetually being built. Instruction Once the candidate confirms their understanding of this, the guide escorts the candidate into the vault. The 2A degree ritual begins in the same position as the 1 degree ritual, with the candidate lying face up, flat down, in the middle of the floor of the pitch black vault. Voice over. Before the beginning there was nothing. A vast empty void there was not nor was there a deep shadowy abyss, nor even a pitch-black vaulted tomb. There was simply nothing, and that was all that existed. This was before time began. Nothingness filled all the highest heavens and flooded right up to the feet of God. It moved across his face. He breathed nothingness in, had it been like water, he might have drowned. But water had not been created yet. Instead, it was nothingness. Instruction The lights in the vault begin to fade up slowly from the direction of the candidate's head, representing dawn. Voice over. Then God uttered the universe or one sequence of letter vibrations. This word became the highest heavens, 
and God reached out his right and left arms through the heavens, leaving hosts of angels in their wake. He reached out into the nothingness below, and it became solid in his wake. From the nothingness, God shaped, formed, molded, and made our world paradise. The nothingness that God shaved, sculpted, carved, and cast away fell and became material reality. Instruction From the direction of the candidate's feet, a large, shadowy object is moving as if it is alive. It resembles a very large octopus, however with an unidentifiable number of tentacles. Voice over. We are told that when God first formed man, one of the angels of his making rebelled against God. This angel, who sat on the right-hand side of God, was damned to fall with the negative matter. It is said many angels sided with this rebel, who also tempted Adam and Eve into exile from paradise. In the digital world of fallen matter, some things appear to change while others do not. Things change at varied paces, and all will change with greater rapidity until everything is utter chaos. This is the key of Atlantean masonry. May you remember it to the grave. This is the grip of Nyarlahotep. Instruction. The lights in the vault suddenly all begin strobing at varied irregular rates. The great, shadowy beast rushes up to the candidate with its tentacles reaching out to grab them. Suddenly, a large yellow light representing the sun breaks across the black horizon in the direction of the candidate's head. The shadowy chaos beast lets out a blood-curdling wail and disappears in a sudden explosion of foul-smelling smoke. From the direction of the candidate's head, a figure approaches, silhouetted in front of the rising sun. He is the source of the voiceover. Voiceover. If Nyarlahotep grips your hand, you will surely be a corpse, for to feel his grip is to touch the timeless nothingness. Nyarlahotep was once a black magician. He chose to fall into the temptations of the rebel angel. He turned away from the one true God and made blood sacrifice to the damned pantheons. He fell into an ecstasy and he entered the realm of the underworld. In this state, Nyarlahotep discovered a terrifying secret. He learned the desert lands west of the Nile were lush and fertile once. It was reduced to silt by the world flood. In the deepest dunes of this desert now rest the corpses of drowned Atlanteans. Then Nyarlahotep was shown the way to raise the dead from the desert. When he returned from the netherworld, the infinite zero of the nothingness, he immediately repented and went to live in the desert. It is said by Bedouins they have seen him squatting in the desert eating dust. The pact Nyarlahotep made with the Dark Lord rendered him a chaos beast, ghost monster of nightmares. It is to Nyarlahotep that I, Imhotep, vizier of the three kings, Cheops, Kephren, and Menkare, go to make a pact with him, to give my soul to travel the underworld in place of his own, in exchange for him raising a courier's guild of dead slaves from the desert, all to be stamped with the sole goal of building three great tombs. It is I, Imhotep, 
who now awakens to dawn in the dune sea from dreaming slumbers of nothingness, haunted by Nyarlathotep. He is near. Instruction. From the direction of the candidate's feet, a hooded figure approaches. In the brighter light of later dawn, the candidate can better see the hooded Nyarlathotep. He is all swaddled in rags, so that his body and limbs are entirely concealed. The gauze wrapped around his skin is seeping blood. Nyarlathotep limps up. From the direction behind the candidate's head, Imhotep draws into view as well. Nyarlathotep stands at the candidate's feet, and Imhotep stands at the candidate's head. Imhotep. O oh, wise Nyarlathotep, I know that you can read my thoughts. I understand you know my intentions already. Nyarlathotep, understand my wisdom. O oh, wise Nyarlathotep, I call you now to labor, and by doing so, to serve the one true God. Nyarlathotep, O oh, foolish Imhotep, what future do you imagine you foresee? Where shall our names be carved on the tombs for others we are to build? Who shall remember the workers once the work is done? Will you guide them back to heaven once you have been sent to hell? Imhotep I am called the scribe. Let me pass once through the underworld now, and then return to oversee building on the tombs. I will record all that I observe beyond death, and leave it to my son, Tahotep. He will thus instruct the workers. Nyarlathotep I am called the Chaos Beast and dweller on the threshold. Do you think you can stand my awful judgment for me, under the scrutiny of the Most High's all-seeing eye itself, until the mortal ends of evil and the final judgment of the material reality? For to answer the call of Cthulhu you must now. To the twin-headed Satan and Moloch, you must pledge to be forever indebted. You must become the chaos beast that I, Nyarlathotep, now am. Imhotep O oh, mighty master of your own fate, my destiny is in the hands of the righteous Most High as much now as forever. I will bear your burden but I am judged only by the one true God. That is my right. Nyarlathotep Then you are duly and truly prepared? Imhotep I am. Now, Nyarlathotep, grip my hand to bind our pact. Instruction Imhotep reaches out to Nyarlathotep, but Nyarlathotep extends a bandaged appendage to the candidate. Nyarlathotep to candidate. Know my grip as you shall know a man by his deeds. Instruction. Nyarlathotep seizes the candidate and drags them to their feet. As soon as the candidate is standing, Nyarlathotep vanishes through a concealed trap door, leaving only his outermost robes behind. Imhotep steps up to these and parts them with his foot to reveal a bloody knot of tentacles surrounding a single, milky eye. Then Imhotep turns to the candidate and grabs their hand in his. Imhotep to candidate. No more is Nyarlathotep the Chaos Beast. Now I summon Osiris, his immortal soul, 
into this raised corpse. For your soul's name to live forever, I shall write the book of coming forth into day, and the book of what is in the Amduat, the way of the dead, the river Styx. Though all the many dead you shall raise shall each be branded by your own unique soul, Osiris, sigil of your aura, they will all die only one death, your own and then you shall be called the King of the Underworld and Lord of the Dead. The slaves in my seed shall follow in our names the same way through the afterlife, and we shall become known as great gods, even alike yad heh -Vod -Heh and Elohim. They will always remember Thoth, soul of Imhotep, and Osiris, soul of Nyarlahotep. Now is the dawn arisen on this first day of the resurrected dead. Let the righteous Most High judge our deeds on this day without error, and may his good mercy mark our names down for all times as his servants. You shall go forth to raise more dead now, but I must journey now into the timeless nothingness of the underworld. Go now, Lord Osiris, soul of Nyarlahotep. Reach into the desert sands as God reached into the nothingness and raise the dead by calling the bodies of the dead Anunnaki to return to the labor of Atlantean masonry. You shall earn the restoration of your soul and redeem this body which belonged to Satan himself. You shall give these all your soul, and my son, Tahotep, will elevate them to democracy. You go to restore Atlantis now, and I, Imhotep, shall journey through the underworld. When I return, Tahotep shall show you my ways, and then you shall lead the workers through transcendence into paradise. For now we part ways, Osiris resurrected Lord of the Dead. Our destinies are already set in stone in the highest heavens above, behind the skies. Go. Instruction While Imhotep has been speaking, the candidate's initial initiator, the guide, has been sneaking up on the candidate from behind. As Imhotep finishes speaking, and turns his back to them. The guide takes the candidate's arm and, turning them around abruptly, escorts them arm in arm from the vault. Guide. So you see that it is because of Imhotep's pact with Nyarlahotep that workers were raised to restore Atlantean masonry after the flood. This is symbolic of how each of us now must work to restore our own fallen souls. We therefore turn to studying the Tree of Life, which is like a blueprint of our finished work. Our DNA is the gross matter of our work, and the alignment of the chakras, the tool we use to work upon our DNA. By perfecting our work in this way, we cleanse our aura and our soul transcends. Therefore, we call the art of perfecting our craft raising the dead. This refers to the transformation of our exterior environment by aligning the chakras to cause our DNA to obey the will of our brains. When our chakras align through the study of the tree of life, our external environment will be calm and serene, a still reflection of our internal composure, our DNA doing the will of our brain through its control of our nervous system. This is how our spirits, when called to labor, do good work to cleanse the chi karma in our aura. We raise the dead, nerves usually unused in our brains, to activate our junk DNA. 
This causes the DNA to transmit the will of the mind directly into the clephotic quanta of our surrounding environment. When we accomplish this, we transcend the lower material world and perceive a higher spiritual world beyond. Instruction By now the guide escorts the candidate to the door of the vault and outside into the antechamber. Here they ask the candidate if they have any questions and if they fully understand. If they understand, they are considered past and have graduated from labor. 